imagine it's a typical Christmas day in 1895, you release 24 wild European rabbits out on your farm in Victoria, Australia, just to play rabbit hunting with friends. But for some random accidents, some of the rabbits eventually got lost in the wild. Seven years later, at least 13,987 rabbits were recorded in the same area. The number didn't stop there. It grew so fast and took over Australia more quickly than any other introduced species ever. Now, even when two centuries have passed, rabbits turn into the country's most costly pest animal ever, causing it to lose $206 million yearly because of their impact on the environment. Especially the beef, lamb and wool industry in Tasmania and Victoria, where the rabbit hunting happened at the beginning, alone lost $30 million every single year. That's the true story of how rabbits took over Australia, and this is Thomas Austin's farm in Bowen Park, Victoria, where the first rabbit escaped into the wild. Apart from the economic concern, this uncontrollable increasing number of rabbits also wreaks havoc on both agriculture and the environment in several ways. One of which is destroying over 297 crops and plant communities, including 24 critically endangered species because of rabbit overgrazing. Rabbits eat almost all types of plants and vegetation, from ringbark trees to shrubs. They even eat seeds that plants need to regenerate, leading to soil erosion. It's a vicious cycle, especially during droughts and post-fire periods when food becomes scarce, they will eat whatever they can just to survive. Moreover, rabbits graze closer to the ground than domestic livestock and feed on newly planted vegetation. This weakens perennial grasses and paves the way for invasive weeds to take over. Hence, not only livestock production, but also revegetation projects and horticultural operations are negatively impacted. Research in semi-arid sites has shown that even one rabbit running wild per two hectares can severely threaten some plant species. When too many highly prolific rabbits are in one area, they compete with other animals for food and shelter, leading to biodiversity loss. Several small ground-dwelling mammals and even seabirds facing extinction due to rabbit interference. Not only that, the abundance of rabbits also sustains high numbers of native predators like cats and foxes, putting additional pressure on the control program. For example, the foxes may suffer from food shortages when rabbit numbers crash after control. But how could seemingly small and harmless rabbits change the entire ecosystem so quickly? Two main reasons. First, they have high production rates. These prolific breeders can produce a significant number of offspring in a short amount of time. According to Agriculture Victoria, a pair of rabbits can turn into over 180 rabbits in just 18 months. Their breeding is most active during the wetter months, which makes Australia an ideal place for a rabbit population explosion. Second, rabbits also have high dispersal rates, which means they move from one place to another pretty fast. In 1880, there was a record of them crossing the Murray River into New South Wales, then reached Queensland in 1886 and Western Australia in 1894. That's more than 5.500 came in total. So how do Australian farmers and governments tackle this invasive rabbit overpopulation problem? Early attempts to control rabbit populations 
relied on mechanical barriers like rabbit-proof fences stretching over 1,700 kilometers. Together with the additional release of rabbit's natural predators, such as European red foxes and feral cats. Bounty hunting, shooting and trapping were also employed to reduce rabbit numbers, but their effectiveness was limited on a continental scale. These measures aimed to curb rabbit dispersal. However, despite these efforts, the rabbits continued to multiply reaching an estimated 496 million at their peak in 1880. In the 50s, Australia turned to biological warfare against the rabbit invasion. Myxoma virus, which causes myxomatosis, a type of viral disease that only kills rabbits and hares, was put into use in 1950. The virus decimated over 90% of feral rabbit populations initially. However, the rabbits developed resistance over time, reducing the virus's effectiveness. A few years later, myxoma virus can only work approximately 40 to 50% of the rabbit population, which is a low number. Therefore, Australia has stopped using it to control wild rabbits. In 1996, a breakthrough occurred with the introduction of rabbit hemorrhagic disease virus 1 or RHDV1. This Czech Republic's highly contagious virus strain caused widespread death among rabbit populations. Just like the myxoma virus, RHDV1 knocked down 90% of the invasive rabbit population but then quickly became resisted. Researchers had to prompt the search for a more potent variant. They found a new variant of this same virus, K5, sourced from Korea. It can overcome genetic resistance in rabbits. This virus showed promising results, although its effectiveness varied from region to region because it just stayed at the original release site and didn't spread. This has paved the way for RHDV2, first released in 2017. In contrast to K5 and the Czech strain, it can kill three to four weeks old rabbits and vaccinated adults. Nowadays, this virus is the dominant RHDV strain used to control pest rabbits in Australia. But viral resistance is still a big risk for the control of rabbits Scientists went on a search for other multifaceted approaches, including chemical interventions in this battle against rabbits. A series of chemical control methods called rabbit recipe have proven highly effective in reducing rabbit populations. This mixed method is now also recommended in Agriculture Victoria's Integrated Rabbit Control Guide. The rabbit recipe includes baiting, ripping or harbour removal and follow-up fumigation. The main goal of this method is to destroy the rabbit's habitat. Rabbits rely heavily on burrows and warrens for shelter and protection. When their habitats are disrupted, their survival rates plummet. Let's break the rabbit recipe down stage by stage. First, baiting. There are two main toxins used for baiting in Victoria. 1080 and Pindoni. 1080 is a compound derived from native plants. It is highly effective against rabbits, but requires careful management due to its toxicity to other animals such as domestic dogs, cats and livestock. When 1080 is either impractical or unsuitable, farmers can use Pindoni, which is an anticoagulant poison. When swallowed, it will disrupt the blood clotting process, making rabbits die slowly from anemia or hypovolemic shock. Because of this delayed death, poisoning with Pindoni can easily be successful because the bait overcomes shyness that may have occurred with strong acute toxins. Farmers often use pre-mixed baits such as carrots or oats laced with these toxins 
strategically placed to attract rabbits like the trail baiting method. Second, ripping. Farmers will destroy rabbit warrens to make it harder for them to reproduce and survive. If this step isn't done, the whole rabbit control program will fail because new rabbits can still take shelter in those already dug warrens. Finally, fumigation is used to eradicate rabbits within their warrens. For this step, toxins and poisons like carbon monoxide are often used to effectively target rabbits within their underground home. But this only works well with moist soil and high terraces, plus the warren has to be completely sealed as well. The rabbit population in Australia looks promising as researchers continue to refine existing methods and explore innovative solutions such as the introduction of additional pathogens. However, it's essential to remember that alongside these efforts, the humane treatment of all animals, even pests like rabbits, must remain a top priority. As we move forward, striking a balance between effective population management and ethical treatment will be crucial in ensuring a sustainable and humane approach to rabbit control in Australia. Hello my friends, did you know Australia is the country with the highest mammal extinction rate in the world? More than 70% of Australia's native animals are found nowhere else on earth, so a loss for Australia is also a loss for the world. One of the biggest threats to native species is feral cats. In today's video, we look at how Australian farmers deal with 6.3 million feral cats. Feral cats first appeared in the wild in the 1850s. To date, the number of feral cats in Australia is estimated at 1.4 to 6.3 million. Wild cats have become a haunting name for Australians, especially farmers. Feral cats are dangerous invasive species. They eat millions of other animals, causing ecological imbalance. They are considered perfect hunters, patient, silent and adaptable. Many native animals are the perfect size prey for feral cats. Currently, many native species such as rats only exist in areas free of feral cats, such as some islands and fenced areas. Although they are in the same cat family, these stray cats are not cute at all. They are aggressive and cause a lot of damage. Specifically, feral cats are linked to the extinction of 25 species of native small and medium-sized mammals and further threaten the existence of more than 100 other native species in Australia. Among them, estimates of the annual predation impact of feral cats on native wildlife in Australia show that 272 million birds, 470 million reptiles, 815 million mammals were killed, along with the undetermined losses were invertebrates and amphibians. These massacres are often committed by feral cats living in the bush, but cats in town areas also kill large numbers of animals. Besides, they can also injure people. On the outside, feral cats can be difficult to distinguish from domestic cats. They have agile bodies, sharp senses and good coordination that are very suitable for hunting. Wild cats live alone and are active at dawn and dusk. During the day, they tend to lie in sheltered areas, including rabbit holes, logs or dense bushes. Feral cat populations are self-sustaining and able to reproduce successfully thanks to abundant food sources. On average, females give birth to two litters per year, the first in spring, the second in late summer and early fall. Under favorable conditions, 
baby wildcats remain with their mother until about seven months of age. They then disperse and live alone. These individuals give birth to dozens of other litters of feral cats. Just like that, wildcats expanded their territory and invaded all of Australia. The number of feral cats suddenly increased, leading to a lack of food. Therefore, they tend to increase their hunting and attacking behavior to ensure survival. Like a leopard in the desert, the feral cat's gentle steps and sharp eyes are directed towards its prey. These unfortunate ducks will become today's meal. Usually, these birds will be the favorite prey of feral cats when they are hungry. Although the birds protested, it was ineffective. They struggled desperately until feral cats tore them apart. In fact, attacking these small animals is quite easy for feral cats. This is a picture of a tiny wild cat attacking a deer. You're right, this absurd thing really happened. In a fight in the wild, victory always belongs to the fierce predators. Strength does not lie in greatness. The truly strong person is the one who survives to the end. The wild cat is such a strong person. They are small, but their attack power and brutality are enough to terrify their opponents. Not only do they attack wild animals, feral cats also attack pets when given the opportunity. Of course, your pet is no match for a wild predator. If not stopped in time, everything will get worse. Its outcome will probably be the same as the deer or deer just now. Feral cats also pose a threat to human health because they can carry infectious diseases such as rabies and respiratory infections. The Australian Feral Cat Reduction Action Plan begins, including direct measures to reduce feral cat numbers such as trapping and baiting. Cameras help plans execute better. Farmers will know how many stray cats are lurking around their area. In addition, the most effective form of controlling feral cats on a large scale is using poisonous bait. However, feral cat bait is only used in Western Australia. Many native animals in the area have developed resistance to this poison. In some parts of Australia, poisonous bait can pose a significant danger to wildlife. What was your first reaction when you saw this image? Don't let its appearance fool you. In fact, each of these cute wild cats can kill up to 1,000 native animals each year. This problem is getting worse, meaning that in some cases, the added pressure of feral cats could quickly push other animals out of the world. Australia's national scientific agency, CSIRO, has reported feral cats kill an average of 1.8 billion Australian animals each year, equivalent to 2,000 native animals every minute. A terrible number, realising that this situation cannot last. The Australian government allows citizens to participate in wild cat hunting activities. However, this can only be done with a hunting licence and in strict compliance with government regulations. The goal is to reduce the number of feral cats in the area, maintain the ecosystem and ensure safety and efficiency in hunting. About 211,000 feral cats were culled in 2023. Dozens of them were hunting possums in the mountains and others were hunting at night in remote and arid regions of Australia. Night comes when feral cats are active in searching for food. The instinct of a predator allows them to operate effectively at night. However, they did not know that in the distance, there were eyes watching and gun muzzles aiming at them. In order to optimize the effectiveness of hunting wild cats, many people also choose to participate in night hunting activities. This is a natural rule 
If you want to catch a predator, you must come when they are hunting. During hunts, farmers can end the lives of feral cats with a shot, but the encroachment of entire feral cat populations cannot. The claws of feral cats have deeply invaded Australia's ecosystem. In the fall before food is scarce, feral cats will hunt small animals for meals. They move to areas near residential areas to find food. Farmers can always easily see stray cats in their gardens at night through cameras. You see, controlling feral cats is a challenge. Locating feral cat hunting takes a lot of effort. Hunters often use specialized lighting systems combined with infrared hunting lights. This is extremely useful for night hunts, helping hunters clearly identify the target and location of feral cats. But things are not that simple. These stray cats are much more difficult to deal with than we think. They are extremely sensitive and have the ability to sense their surroundings very quickly. Besides, cats' eyesight at night is very good, so once they have identified the target, they quickly rush in and catch their prey. Therefore, hunters need to be extremely cautious. If detected, feral cats will run away or return to attack. A night hunting group needs at least two people to support each other. All they need to do is hide, quietly observe and wait. When they detect a target, they will move their hunting equipment towards the target, aim and bring back their bodies. In fact, besides the hardship, hunting also brings many interesting things. You won't know when the wild cats will appear, but the feeling of discovering and defeating them will certainly make you excited. This joy does not come from killing, but farmers know that every shot they fire will help prevent the encroachment of feral cat populations, or at least discourage feral cats in the development area. In addition to hunting, feral cat trapping is also allowed in all parts of Australia. All measures are the same. The goal is to limit the number of aggressive predators. Although feral cats have only existed in Australia for the last 200 years or so, they have left a destructive mark on the Australian landscape. In recent years, Australian farmers have also made strong plans to limit the invasion of feral cats. You see, they are very determined to fight these cute-looking assassins.